All right. Hi, everyone. I think we're live, and this session is being recorded. Uh, so welcome. I'm Matt Goulash, and I head up product delivery and commercialization, and I'm joined by... <laughs> I'm Susan Finnegan. I am the product manager at Cardinal for our merchant products. And, uh, and we're both really excited to be able to talk to you all today to kick off our first conversations with Cardinal of 2022. Um, yeah, and our, and our goal today is really just to have a conversation with each other here, as well as a conversation with you all on the power of connections. Because, you know, it's been a couple of crazy years, and I think the whole concept of connections uh, has really taken on a whole new meaning for me. I, I know that many of us in the payments world were fortunate enough to take our workplaces from the office to home, and then now some of us are headed back to the offices again. Um, and it was during that time that I re really realized just how important connections were, and they're more important than ever. Uh, and there was a real change in the way we, we collaborated and connected with our colleagues and and for me, it was paramount, uh, not just the collaboration and fighting fraud uh, within the ecosystem, but also on a personal level as well. And I really think that Cardinal's mantra when it comes to a connected vision really helped us to quickly pivot and keep making progress with our products at a, a rapid rate. Um, and Susan, you, you joined Cardinal during the pandemic. So how does this whole idea of connections resonate with you? I mean, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> I know. So when we first heard about this topic, you know, I was thinking, oh, business, business, business. Like, how does Cardinal relate with the industry? How do we relate with the clients that we do business with? And then you brought up this personal level. And I was like, yeah. Um, you know, I did join during the pandemic. I did not meet any of the people that I would be working with in person. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So video was the way that we went. But honestly, I never felt isolated or disconnected from anybody. I really think that connection is a foundational pillar that Cardinal is built upon. And like I said, it's, I think it's seen through the partnerships that we have and the relationships that we have within the industry and with the people that we do business with. But what I saw when I joined Cardinal was that it's also very foundational to the way that we do business internally um, and the way that we interact and work with each other on a personal um, and professional level. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and I think that's one of the reasons we thought this would be such a great topic to discuss today, really because of the parallels and the associations between our business and payments when it really came to connections. Um, so if we go to the next slide, and the slide is really just to kind of help you have a visual as we're talking through some of these things, because I, I, I actually love this slide. But, you know, we've always known how important making connections are, especially when it comes to payments. For instance, our vision has always been around Cardinal's network, where we sit on both sides and we're creating bridges to connect the payments ecosystem for the benefit of the whole, you know, because we know if you look at the left hand of that slide, there's uh, the customers, I'm sorry, the merchants, they know a lot about their customers. And if you look at the right hand, the blue, uh, the issuers know a lot about their cardholders. But a lot of times it's the connection in between where it can be challenging. And, and this is really where we've seen the biggest struggles in the ecosystem over the years and where we've been able to make a difference, really because people don't often think about it, but um, false declines due to lack of information or lack of trust are really the biggest forms of friction out there, right, Susan? Yeah, so you brought up this notion of trust. Um, and when I think about connections, I think they're really grounded on trust. Um, and so you're right, you know, we have the merchants on one side, we have the issuers on the other side. Um, and Cardinal does act as a bridge that connects the two. Um, and when we, we think about working in silos and you hear this more and more as we attend um, more industry conferences is that we're trying to break away from those silos and Cardinal's in this really unique situation where we've built strong connections with those that we do business with on both sides. So we sit, we connect those two entities, the merchant and the issuer. And so we're yeah. in this unique position. Yeah, and, and you know, when it comes to those false declines, I think the biggest thing is really that it's a situation where the merchants and the issuers both lose. Because in this case, it isn't just 
the consumer that slowed down for a few seconds in order to be authenticated, but rather <laughs> you're the customer, you go to purchase something and it says, no, it's not you. And you're over there saying, yes, it is me. And now you have to call your bank. It may take a couple minutes. For me, it's taken up to an hour sometimes to try and get this resolved and and to get my card unlocked. And that's why a lot of times you hear that informal term, I think, of uh, customer insult, you know, because it's not a great experience. And, you know, while fraud losses account for around $8 billion, uh, in 2021, if you look at the numbers, it's actually on this slide, uh, the $700 billion by the end of 2022 is the projection, projection around false declines. That's 700 with a B. That's a really big number. Uh, and it shocked me the first time I saw it. So this is where we wanted to talk about how do we make progress? Where are we seeing bright spots? What are some of the biggest challenges? And you know, what do we see coming next? Um, so if we go to the next slide, you know, Susan, I know you were going to talk a little bit about progress and the fact that mm -hmm. there is progress, right? <laughs> Yeah, um, I do want to take a step back and think about, you know, that number that you just said with false declines, yeah. um, because I've been at Cardinal for a year now, and that number finally resonated with me. Um, and how do we combat false declines? It's really, you know, building trust within the industry, within those people that we do business with, um, and breaking outside of our silos, sharing information between the entities that are involved in making a payment happen. Um, so I do think that we've made a lot of progress um, with the transition to EMV 3DS. You know, there's migration is still in progress. And I think that was a, one of the first steps needed to start breaking down barriers and start sharing information so that we can build trust within the ecosystem, so that we can share information that helps to eliminate these false declines. Um, because it really is vital for our business. Um, right. We're not only talking about you know, the loss of that transaction, but when you think about it, a merchant has the fear of of losing that consumer and the issuer has the fear of losing top of wallet um, with the cardholder. So there's progress to be made, which we'll talk about throughout this presentation. Um, but I think that we have made a lot of progress over the year. And I think that, you know, we're seeing um, positive results of that within the ecosystem so far. Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's that initial pipe, right? Uh, I think the biggest thing to call out about these past few years is that heavy lift on, on readiness. Everyone has been hyper-focused on readiness, building out the foundation of a completely new set of rails and capabilities. And uh, I like to think of a toll road. Uh, I don't know if anybody else can get on board with my analogy, but... Um, for me, when you know a new toll road or a highway is coming, it's exciting because you know there's this new highway that's going to offer a faster path to get you to where you want to go. But then after a while, I mean, it does take time and work and effort and construction. And you may get lackadaisical or frustrated because of the amount of time it takes, and that's a couple years. But then it finally opens, and there's that refresh level of excitement. And I think that's where we were last year. Uh, with a lot of folks that found out the new toll road was wider, it offered an upgraded path, and there was a real improvement. It, I mean, what's great is we actually saw about 110 basis points of lift and 35 percentage points of reduction uh, of fraud resulting from the additional capability to share that 10 times more data that you hear about across the rails between the merchant and the issuer and to connect those dots. Uh, you know, we know there's opportunities, as Susan, you mentioned, and there's areas to improve. We need the rest stops. We need the exciting eateries, the exclusive pass uh, express lanes to get you on and off the road fast. All of these ancillary and value added capabilities. But, you know, that also takes time and, and we'll get there. So um, what we do know is that the additional data is yielding results. We see behaviors starting to change. But now it's time to start taking things to the next level. And as Susan mentioned with trust, to start establishing some of the trust in these new capabilities. And a positive sign I know that I saw at a most recent merchant conference I was at was 
the fact that the keynote speaker was an issuer there to educate the merchant on how valuable that data was and the things that they could do by getting some of these additional insights. And that's where I think this constant communication and the, the education between merchants and issuers can be critical. And, and that's something that we've helped facilitate for, for years. Um, but I know that's my idea of the toll road, Susan. I know that you, you said, oh, I like the toll road, but you think of it in a little bit of a different way, more around the yeah. Um, so we could go to the next slide. Um, for me, I, you know, I see the merchant on one side of a bridge and I see the issuer on the other side. Um, when Matt and I talked about this, I was thinking about like the bridge to Asgard. Um, you know, my mind just went there automatically. Um, but, you know, I see Cardinal as that infrastructure that's in the center. And so we are the foundation that brings the two together. And for me, what I'm really focused on right now is really the data. Um, so, you know, the first phase was EMV 3DS, where the merchant is giving more data to the issuer. And we can talk about the importance of that data. Um, it is very important that the quality of that data is there. Um, probably do a whole session. You probably do a whole session I, on yeah, data. I could. I could. <laughs> <laughs> it gets me very excited. Um, but the quality is extremely important because when you think about it, the merchant has certain data points within their environment and the issuer has certain data within their environment. And, and when you're sending stuff like billing information or shipping information or cardholder name or email address, what's going to happen is that issuer is going to look on their side and say, hey, does that match up with what I have? in my database, does this look legitimate? Yeah. And so if you're sending static data and or dummy data, um, it's not gonna look legitimate and that could lead to more um, challenges or um, even declines in authorization. And what we're looking at here is really decreasing false declines and increasing approvals. And so the first phase is EMB 3DS where we share data in one direction um, but now, you know, the route back on that bridge to get back home, um, we need to share information back with the merchants. And so that's what we've really been focused on for uh, a few months now um, in terms of how we're going to develop the capability, well, not even the capabilities, but how we're going to develop what we're going to make available to the merchants so that now merchants can get more informed information back and they feel more confident sending transactions into authorization. So it's no longer just about, you know, authentication and um, authenticating that cardholder is who he or she says they are, but it's also about like how that's going to impact authorization and what data points a merchant needs in order to feel confident in actually sending that transaction through to authorization. And then the third phase, I think, is really building out analytics. Um, what types of velocities can we look at? Um, have we seen that pan in our ecosystem, within the Cardinal ecosystem? Have we seen that pan with an e that email address? Have we seen it with that device um, ID? Have we seen it with um, that shipping address? Um, so really building in velocities so that both entities feel confident that that person truly is legitimate and should be making that transaction. Um, but it's even more than just data, right, Matt? I mean, you've yeah. been working really hard this year on your commercialization efforts of different solutions and products that we're also working on in um, helping to build connections within the environment. Yeah, you know, you can go to the next slide, but I think the, the thing that resonated with me when you said static data was Again, I, I know we're going to keep coming back to the word trust, but sometimes what we find out, and oftentimes what we find out is when static data is being sent through, there's situations where the merchant didn't even realize what they were doing and the impact that it could have, right? But once you establish that trust, it's like if Susan knows me and something accidentally goes wrong or I do something that I didn't expect uh, would have implications on her, she just comes and has a conversation with me, right? Because she knows that's Matt. But if she doesn't know me from somebody, she can make an assumption that's not necessarily true that 
there was a certain reason. So again, if we can get the word out in the ecosystem, start having these conversations around the impacts of certain actions uh, within that communication back and forth, that's also where we can help some of these things. But I think the biggest things that I heard you say that really resonated with me were around complexity and sophistication. Because when we look at this slide that we're on now, which is really just the slide from two slides ago, we just put some green arrows in the opposite direction. But uh, you, know, you, you mentioned that the responsibility has always historically been on the merchants when it comes to sharing the data. Therefore, the issuers um, were on the receiving end of all this data. Therefore, the goal for the merchant a lot of times was typically liability protection. But now that the data uh, is so much richer, there could be different levers that can be pulled within this complex issuer ecosystem. So we're learning that a solution really depends on the way that merchants want to share their data, the way that issuers are able and wanting to consume data. And then by taking both of these things into account, it can allow us to, to build solutions and really reach a whole new level of sophistication. I know, Susan, you're seeing that in some of these data sharing solutions that you're close to right now. Yeah. Um, you know, so how do we open up that line of communication? How do we build trust? Um, one of the things that I got really excited about over the last few months is FIDO, you know, fast identity online and what we're doing in that space. Um, it's not, but it does require us to build trust, right? Because now we're giving the merchant the capability to authenticate the consumer, the cardholder, mm -hmm. um, and the issuer really has to trust that that is a legitimate um, way of authenticating the cardholder where they no yeah. longer have that control. Yeah, I mean, you can get these this extra data to the issuers and they can make better decisions. And and we're seeing some of these things, like like you mentioned, FIDO is one of them, which is where, I mean, that's something I know that gets you and I both excited, which is new technologies that can now be woven into uh, a new set of, of rails that are out there, right? And these are things that are standards um, because now the system has been upgraded and these technologies and standards like FIDO, which stands for Fast Identity Online, um, they become really important because what something like FIDO does is it it's a technology or a standard that taps into biometric capabilities within devices you already have every day. So it's using these privacy preserving technologies that are protecting PII data from ever leaving the device. Um, and they're highly secure, good methods of, um, of a challenge experience when it has to happen. So therefore, the issuers are actually thinking, there's certain situations, if I trust this merchant enough, I'm going to delegate that, that experience where you as the merchant can now control that whole end-to-end -end experience. You know, merchants spend a lot of time and money to get somebody to come to their site, look at their products, add it to a cart, and then hit that purchase button. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of times that experience is handed over to, uh, to the issuer, the, the, the cardholder's issuer, and, and the merchant is, is a little bit blind to that scenario. So if we can bridge that gap and issuers say, I, I trust this standard as long as you're using it, then that's a great thing. And then you know, on the other side, if the issuers are using something like a standard like that FIDO that we just talked about, then the merchants can trust that if they're going to hand over control, at least they know their cardholder is going to go through a certain type of experience. So that's, I know that's something that, that you find very exciting too, Susan. Yeah. And then yesterday we were talking about friction and mm -hmm. how some merchants, they're really not interested in liability shift of 3DS, um, yeah. but they do want to help authenticate that this cardholder um, is legitimate and they want to find ways to to identify the cardholder with the issuer and working on you know data sharing um, capabilities um, is something else that we're looking at where you don't necessarily have to go through 3ds but you can still share data with the issuer and get that lift in authorization and like you mentioned earlier why not flip it on its head why not turn this around and say if you're sharing data over time between merchant and issuer, and we have that unique position where we sit in the middle, there's a lot of things that we can get access to that are valuable to the issuers and the merchants. So 
why don't we turn that pipe around and also start getting things back to the merchant that they find valuable and we can expose those in offline ways and in online ways. It's, it's really dependent on the merchant's business. And these are the things we really want to explore over this next year to figure out what's important to you as the merchant, what's important to you as the issuer, and then how can we bring both those sides together and get everybody what they need in order to increase approvals, reduce fraud, and help both of both sides of the businesses accelerate, right? Yeah. 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 And so I think by going through this process, um, when we thought about this webinar, you know, it really helps me um, to think about connections in a different way. So not just within our business, but also within life and how connections are really grounded upon trust and the trust that you can create in the environment. And when you were talking about the toll road, you know, Cardinal is the foundation for that. Um, we are that bridge that connects the two, um, the merchant and the issuer. Yeah, I mean, it, once you establish trust, you can do some pretty incredible things. You can't, you can't build trust. I mean, you can't build connections without trust, and quality matters too in everything you do. Um, so we're just scratching the surface here. Hopefully, some of the things. We talked about today piqued your interest and you know if if they did let us know we're going to open things up for questions but some of these things we'll even plan on doing dedicated sessions for so please reach out to us we really appreciate your time and now i think we're going to take a couple questions here in the in the little time that we have left so thanks and bring it on <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to bring up the old question box here, see what we got. All right, so you were talking about enhanced data and the power of the updated 3DS protocol. I hear a lot about method URL and how it's important to issue data. Can you explain why it's important? Yeah, I mean, I, I can jump in, Susan, and I know that you love method URL too, so, so please piggyback on this. But I, what I would say is that we could probably do a whole session on method URL alone, but it is something that's really critical to the protocol. Uh, it's optional for issuers on whether or not they want to use that, but when an issuer wants to do it uh, as part of the protocol, the merchant needs to allow the issuer to, to do method URL. And what that is, is it's an opportunity for the issuer to come into the merchant's environment and collect some, some data in a very controlled way. In previous protocols and in other types of solutions that are out there, the control of where that happened wasn't a great experience. So now if we can do it on the front end, uh, within that initial flow, then it can be a much better experience where it doesn't cause any additional latency. In fact, Cardinal, we've built best practices guides around that, and we just recently released um, a test case so that we know that our merchants have integrated properly to minimize any type of, of uh, additional latency that that could cause. I like to think of it as, as if I was home and my, I'm the merchant and, some, and the issuer calls me up and says, hey, I wanna borrow your toolbox. And I say, hey, that's great. I'm gonna leave the garage door open between two to four and you can come over and grab it. That's kind of how I like to think of method you're all right. Uh, the merchant allows that issuer to come in in a controlled way, come and get some of the things that they're willing to to share with the issuer, and then the issuer can use those tools to make better decisions in the end. But we could dive into that uh, in a whole other session if we wanted to. Yes. What types of data uh, did you, sorry, Susan, did you want to add anything to Method URL on, on that? Otherwise, we'll go to the next question. No, I agree um, with what you said. And again, I think that's, Part of phase one of data sharing is really, you know, wait, looking at ways that you can optimize method URL performance um, between the two entities um, so that you do get that more enriched data over to the issuer and they can make more informed decisions about that transaction. Yeah. Well, uh, here's a good one. What, what types of data do you see as beneficial for merchants and issuers to share? Do you want to say that one, Susan? Is that is sure? That <laughs> Um, again, I want to go back to quality um, because quality really is important here. Um, so I think when I think about just, you know, basic information, I think about, you know, the cardholder name, the email address, 
I think about the shipping address and billing address. I think that those types of data are really easy to look up within your own environment to ensure that it's matching what you have. And I think that can help to make a, a stronger connection um, and help to really identify the person who's trying to transact. Yeah, and, and as a merchant, when it comes to billing shipping and some of these things like state or country code, making sure you're doing it in accordance with the protocol or your solution provider so that and normalizing that, right? Because if the issuer then gets that information and they want to compare some of these things uh, in order to see if it's fraudulent and maybe there's something that's off in the billing versus the shipping or the person entered it wrong the second time or there was a drop down and those don't match one for one, that can impact things like risk models, risk scores, or or the ways that they're going to, to build and write rules and make decisions. Uh, so that's another one. Yeah. We got three minutes. We may have time for just one more. Any any others out there? Just a short short one. Sunset 1.0 question mark. <laughs> Go a lot of different ways. But yeah, get on EMV3S. Uh -oh. get, get on so, EMV3S, work with your provider, ask lots of questions. We're working to make sure it's a, a, a seamless and, and good experience, but uh, reach out to us if you have questions that are specific. If whoever wrote that, if there's more that you can give us some details specifically on what you want to know, but it is coming uh, October. Make sure that you're getting ready. And because uh, we're getting ready, we are ready, and we want to make sure that you are ready too. And if you're not on EMV 3DS already, uh, we need to, to get you uh, on that path as soon as possible. Anything else that you want to add there, Susan, on that? I think it, it's when I think about the 3DS um, 1.0 sunset, I really think about the experience to for not just the merchant and the issuer, but also the consumer cardholder. Um, I think that there's a lot of benefits to using EMV 3DS, and I think that it will create a positive experience um, by using it. Um, so as we approach the sunset, like really work if you're if you use Cardinal, really work with um, your contact within Cardinal to ensure that you're optimizing um, and you're ready for the sunset, so that we can. Um, really optimize performance and help you and the the issuer, merchant issuer, to um, decrease those false declines. The benefit of the sunset is that, think about it, everybody's going to be on EMV 3DS. So a lot of these new use cases, again, we can focus on the optimization. We can focus on those new use cases. So I would say that the sunset really gets both of us excited in, in that respect but I see we probably have about 30 seconds. So I don't know if we're going to turn into pumpkins. I'm actually not sure how this system works, if it's just going <laughs> to self-destruct at 1130. But uh, if it does, we want to thank you all for joining us today. Uh, it was really fun. Thanks, Susan. This has been fun back and forth. Hopefully you all got some good information and enjoyed it, and we can't wait to do another one. Three, two, one. <laughs> I'm just joking.